Hey, what's going on, our mirrorless minions? We've got Mike Baining back in front of the screen tonight for Mirrorless Minutes, episode number 37. Uh, we titled this one 3 and 30. Although I think we might go over three and over 30, but <laughs> the, the gist of it was that we were going to each have three things to talk about in our 30 minute show. But uh, you know how it is. Sometimes we get a little excited, have a little bit more to talk about. But mm -hmm. first, welcome back, Mike. Yeah. Hey, thanks. Thanks. It's uh, great to uh, be back, sort of. You know, I mean, the places I've been have all been beautiful and sunny and <laughs> yeah. 80. So I, I can't say I'm like super excited to be back, other than it's good to be back on the show okay, right that way and it was it, fun the other week i got to watch the end of it live so oh there you go unusual that you're sitting at the, i was trying to write some nasty comments but i couldn't <laughs> figure out how to drop them in <laughs> it's funny though you know we do these shows every other week so when you're gone a week mm -hmm. it feels like it's like forever oh. i'm thinking holy cow like how long ago did we do a show together last and it's only been you know a show yeah. Uh, I agree. In fact, yeah, I can tell by my desk because I throw yeah. crap on there all week long. And I go, oh, I got to get this cleaned up. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Obviously, I don't clean anything up. It just piles up. Uh, and I don't know, man. <laughs> that that leads me into, I think, our, our first thing we're going to talk about. And that's wow. the uh, the cleaning video, which is the new vlog post of Jamie right. McDonald. Um, yeah. So so just so you guys know, when we, when we start these shows, we're on about 15 minutes early. Jamie gets on and I'm playing his video from today and I can't stop laughing because I mean, I feel like I'm driving home with the guy and I don't know if anybody's seen it yet, but you got to go out and watch his vlogs and uh, they're a lot of fun. And you know, you get to see trucks blasting past them and yeah, <laughs> and walking into abandoned houses and uh, that music you put on sounded like a scary movie. I thought, <laughs> right. I thought, you know what, if he gets, if he gets attacked here, at least we'll know it's, it's documented, right? <laughs> You know, it's funny too, because that house around the, it's an old house mm -hmm. and back, you know, when those houses were built in the late 1800s, early 1900s, whatever, the entrances to the basement weren't necessarily inside. So you had those exterior storm cellar doors. Oh yeah. yeah. And there are two locations on that house where those storm cellar entrances were at. Mm -hmm. One of them is completely wide open and you can tell that it's there. The other one is like partially obscured. And what you don't see in the video is there's several moments of me stepping and then pushing down with my feet and then inching over and then pushing down with my feet and then pushing down and then a couple of bricks fall in and i'm like okay i'm done it's moving in that out. general direction it's time to go back the other way but, so yeah. yeah so so tell us the inspiration you know what's going on you know it's i've had a lot of people talk about like the when i do these little video clips where i'm just mm -hmm. kind of talking about like me shooting I, i've gotten a lot of good feedback. Like I was kind of surprised at the amount of feedback I get. And then it's, it comes in all forms. I mean, I get emails, you know, saying, Oh, that was really cool. You know, that you, that you stopped mm -hmm. and kind of talked about what was driving, you know, your thought process when you were shooting at this place, or I like, you know, that you're, you're bringing us along when you just go out driving around and shooting. So I thought, right. well, hell, you know, why not just try the whole vlogging thing? You know, I subscribe to a couple of people on YouTube, like Casey yeah. Neistat is, like if you watch Bruce. YouTube videos, you probably know who Casey is. Um, and just seeing him vlog and I'm thinking that just kind of looks fun. If I have the time I'll vlog and insanely enough, like I've done one every single day for a week now. And, mm -hmm. and I had uh William booze, Bill booze today ask me, you know, your comment, I'll be interested to see how long you can keep this up <laughs> because at first I was thinking, man, you know what? I probably won't be able to do it like this for very long, but I'm getting a little bit better at it. And uh, the editing is quick. So it only takes me about 20 minutes to do it. The hardest part is making sure I have something to talk about. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm always worried that people are going to think, you know, God, why is he telling me about his addiction to soda pop, you know, <laughs> or whatever, you know, but and, and the kids are off for a second day. Right. You know, and it's like, then I start thinking, well, maybe that's kind of the fun about it, you know, mm -hmm. is that it's just kind of, we're just hanging out, you know, and we're right. going to shoot. So when weather gets a little bit better and I'm not trudging through, you know, deep snow, mm -hmm. um, I'll probably do more where I'm actually just talking directly to the camera and doing more of the photography side of it. But right now it's just cold and <laughs> it's not the funnest thing to get out of the car and do that. So I haven't done the photography side so much as the, this is the Jamie side of things. But right, it's right. I have but cool. No, you know what? So, in fact, well, so of course, my first question is like, we well, got multiple cameras set up. You got cameramen set up. Everywhere. So I do. I think, 
That so, might lead us to something. So let me grab a camera down. Yeah. Um, some of the video is being shot with the TG4. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the video the other day, there are exterior shots where the camera's mounted on the outside of the car. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's actually down low on the car. And you can see like the front quarter panel of the car as I'm driving. Another sequence, uh, the camera's actually mounted on the roof, on the moon roof, and filming down over the hood. And those are all done with the TG4 just because it doesn't matter if it's raining, snowing, or yeah. literally cats and dogs falling out of the sky. This camera right. will live through it. Um, so that's with that camera. Some of the other stuff that's ultra wide is being yeah. shot inside with this little GoPro competitor that has mm -hmm. this fuzz on the top that I glued on is a little bit of a wind. This is like <laughs> a little wind break there. Uh, the way I'm attaching it to the car is actually going to be like my first share of the night. Yep. It's this little suction cup mount. It's by a company called Fat Gecko. Um, they don't have a skinny gecko. They just have this fat <laughs> one. And this suction cup mount is actually strong enough to where I've mounted EM1s on the outside of the car and driven down the road at, you know, mm -hmm. in the speed limit, you know, 50, 60 right. miles an hour, what have you. Yeah. Right. Um, and it's never come undone ever, <laughs> not once yet. I do have this Olympus lanyard that I've secured to it that when whenever it's possible, I try to loop this up into like the window and then the roll window. the window up so that if it does break loose, it's just going to kind of dangle there. Yeah, better As dangling than, um, than, than bouncing down the side of the highway <laughs> or the road. Exactly. I mean, right. Olympus is gracious with the equipment for us, yeah. but I don't want to be the guy that just calls <laughs> them up every week saying, yeah, I dropped another camera off the side of the car. Can you send me yeah. a replacement? Or, um, or or the guy when it, the camera hits and it flies into another car. Yeah, and then yeah. their lawyer talks <laughs> right. about it. Exactly. So uh, the link to this product will be, you know, in the description below, like we always do with our videos. It's mm -hmm. like twenty bucks, twenty five bucks. It's oh, worth it just bad. for the strength of it. Yeah. Um, also, a little bit of info on it. This section right here is removable, and then this headpiece can travel down so that it becomes like shorter. Oh, okay. So it doesn't have to be quite as long as it is now, which I should shorten it up so that when it's inside the car, like in today's vlog post, the camera looks like it's probably like right here in my face right, in because face. the TG4 can only zoom back so far. But um, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's come in handy for a lot of things, hmm. actually. Yeah, that's that's not bad at all, actually, for the price wise too. Right. Uh, I'll probably look at that because I like I like absolutely doing the same thing if I it's, can is you know get something out of fun. the car. Oh yeah. So, you know, like I said, the, the two cameras that have been used the most for the, the outside stuff are the the TG4 and all the time-lapse sequences were done with mm -hmm. the TG4. Uh, the, I think the first or second vlog post that I did where we had a time-lapse mm -hmm. of us clearing snow out at our house yeah, was all that. done, you know, the in-camera time-lapse from the TG4. Mm -hmm. um, video, like the, the better-looking video that I've been shooting has all been done with um, an EM1 I've got sitting up here. And audio for that is captured with my second pick of the night. Mm -hmm. And it's a product that I've mentioned before in a past video, right. separate from ours, but it's the Rode Video Mic Go. Uh, Rode makes two different mics like this. They make the Video Mic Pro and they make the Video Mic Go. The differentiator between the two is that the Rode Video Mic Pro uh, is a powered mic. Uh, right. It takes a separate battery and it has, I think, an adjustable gain on it, right? It does. Okay, so whereas this one draws power directly from the camera, so you do see a battery hit on your camera. So far for me, it really hasn't been a big hit. Uh, it's not yeah. anything that's slowed me down in video shooting with it. But I think this is about 90 bucks, maybe. Yeah, I think that's a little, definitely a, a good amount cheaper. Yeah, I think the Rode Video Mic Pro is almost $200. Yeah, it was like 180 I thought, because yeah. I know that's the one I had picked up. That's, yeah. that's a good one there. That, now that and you had to get the dead cat with it. Yeah, so the dead uh, cat was separate as well, and I think this was like twenty five bucks. So right. for this setup right here, you're looking at about a hundred and five dollars, uh, and you know it's a shotgun mic, so it's directional. So I've got the camera set up. The rec the audio is coming in here. It's not recording sound from around the sides in the back, which is great for mm -hmm. vlogging or interview purposes. Uh, the pen video that we did together, right? We used your video mic pro. You outside, know, so yeah. that's how we could shoot outdoors and I could get, you know, us mm -hmm. talking or you talking or what have you. And it sounds great. So second pick right there for me is, is that. Yeah. Very cool. 
yeah that, that is cool and I, i'd imagine you might see you know considering we'll uh be driving over there together to chicago you may you may see some vlogging right from the beginning <laughs> oh yeah i have a feeling you know? there's going to be a lot of uh a lot of audio video captured over the yeah. course of that trip and i and i think we're going to get a lot of people that we always talk to as well yeah you that's know, they're going to get on the show and they don't even know it yet so be prepared if you yeah. know us and if you don't know us be prepared because you might <laughs> right frederick van johnson's going to be doing an episode of this week in photo from out of chicago we're doing stealth slash sniper right. mirrorless minutes <laughs> that's right you know impromptu interviews on the fly um third pick it's, it shouldn't even be considered a pick just because you like so many people have had it forever but i just got it and i have to talk about the pen f <laughs> um and it's killing me that that i've only literally had like two days to shoot with it so far and um and it's been like crappy crappy weather and just yeah nasty but i do have a few uh photos that i'll share today from today's vlog post actually mm -hmm. they're actually photos from the video but this camera is sick. <laughs> the The film profiles or the color and mono, uh, I'm going to call them film profiles because mm -hmm. that's what they look like to me, uh, mm -hmm. are phenomenal to use. And I've got one that I've customized myself that I'm almost there with how I want it to look. But it's, it's a cool camera, you know. I, I think everybody needs to at least before they say that it's not something that they would be interested in, Right. They should try to find an event or a venue where you can see it in person before you make that call. Um, I was a huge fan of the Pen EP5. I've got one sitting up here. Right. And I love that camera, the the build quality. It's different than the OMD line, in my opinion, as far as not just the ergonomics because of the shape, but I think actually because of the shape, the rigidity or something is different. It just has a completely different solid feel to it. There's no... God dang it. Well, I don't know. Solid, how yeah. yeah I will badly. tell you this. Yeah. The solid fill of the pen is, it is different than the EM one. It's, um, it, it's just the, the neurals are different or something. That I think I saw, yeah, I, I think I saw, um, maybe camera store TV. One of those guys, uh, somebody did a uh, review on, mm -hmm. on YouTube and I were, I work in a, in an industrial setting during the day. Mm -hmm. So I understand some of the terminology he was talking about. He said, it feels like it's machined from a solid billet of aluminum, meaning that they just took a block of aluminum right. and milled out all the body out of that. And that's how it feels. It just feels so solid. It feels like an Apple product. You know, there's yeah, a difference between holding an iPhone and like a cheap Android phone. You can feel yeah. the build quality in it. Um, and that's Absolutely. how it feels with this. Yeah. And this right here would put me right back into wanting to always, not always, but carry a pen more often than probably an OMD or something everywhere I go, just because mm -hmm. it reminds me of the EP5, the way it the, just has that feel that feels good. But I don't have to contend with the fact that there's an external viewfinder because it's integrated now. Yeah. So this is, like I said, I'm only two days in. Uh, you and I are shooting this weekend with a couple right. other pen owners in Ann Arbor. So I just, I cannot wait to do that, you know. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something about, you know, it just dawned on me. The, I, the last two trips I took, the last two weeks, I only brought the pen. I, I haven't ever really done that. I've always kept one other OMD with me just to be safe. Right. Why? But that's what I was doing. I said, no, I'm bringing the pen only. And, uh, man, I've been real happy with it. But something I discovered this week, when I shoot uh, in the street or whatever, I'm always wearing this darn hat. And yeah. Every time with an OMD or whatever, because you have to turn it around. In the middle, I got to turn my hat around. Yeah. Have to turn my hat around anymore because this is up here. I'm always here now. Exactly. So I don't need to turn the hat around, so I'm like really excited. <laughs> and I didn't even realize it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been shooting three months with the pen, and and I didn't realize it. I've been turning my hat around. And I go, you know, I don't need to do that. I just tilt it this way. Yep. Now, and so so outside of photography, one of my hobbies is I love firearms i love to shoot i grew up you know with uh firearms in the house hunting and i love to shoot guns it's fun mm -hmm. and i've noticed you know when i'm when i when i'm shooting with a camera this is how i'm shooting i'm left eye dominant but when i shoot a, a firearm i'm sighting in i'm right eye dominant really i don't even understand how that works there's probably some weird psychology there i don't know but i'm gonna try and train myself to be right eye dominant with a camera because that's yeah 
can be Oculus or something. I don't know what the hell it would be <laughs> called, but because I want to be able to take advantage of being able to shoot like that. Yeah, you, both you eyes open. Exactly. Because that's how I shoot a, a a rifle or a pistol. So right, yeah. um, I'm thinking I can pull it off. So you might see me looking a little awkward, you know, like somebody trying to pat their head and rub their stomach at the same time. <laughs> That'd be me in Ann Arbor, just you know, discombobulated. But yeah, uh, well, we'll watch you so you don't step off into the street. Or right, yeah, <laughs> that's one of the things I always like to talk about, especially because yeah. I've done it. <laughs> Environmental <laughs> awareness. That's right. That's right. So what did you uh, what All did right. you bring to share? This? Well, I've got a couple of things, and you got to imagine it's going to start with the pen. Yeah. Uh, it's not the pen, but uh, it's a little, little bling for the pen. And let's see if I can get it up there. Oh, you can yeah. see the, sh the shutter button and the hot shoe there. Um, those are both, uh, let's see, I want to make sure I got that, what it was called exactly right. Uh, it's cherry burl. So pieces of wood, and it's a very nice, uh, we can see the wood here or not, but you know, that's the hot shoe thing. Very fits great right inside there. And this is from a company called Artisan Obscura. And boy, they've got some high end stuff. They, you know, um, high end to a point. I know the other day, Jamie and I were talking back and forth on Messenger or something during the day, and he sent me something about these, you know, these shutter releases because I, because it has the screw hole in there on the pen app. So you can, so I've been blinging out the camera whenever I can and buying little different things. Well, I found he found one that was what for Leicas. Yeah, well, it, it worked for any camera. I mean, but it was marketed. Any, it was marketed to the Leica crowd. Eight hundred, eight hundred yeah. for the button. <laughs> for the button, and then the hot shoe cover, I think, was another like nine oh, yeah. or thirteen hundred bucks. Yeah, uh, unbelievable. Okay, the, these are not that high, <laughs> yeah. but I they think still the look awesome expensive. though. Oh yeah, the most expensive one, maybe the most expensive one, seventy. Yeah, um, but we got a good deal for you. You're if you if you order these things, and I put a little bit on our page and stuff too. Um, this will be in the show notes. Use uh, MB Photo as a uh, code, and it's twenty percent off your first order. So it makes it a little bit more reasonable. They do come with the little uh, O rings to put okay. under there to yeah. so they'll stay on. Because I will tell everybody, give you a warning, um, if you're going to start buying some from Amazon and that, I'm already down three. <laughs> oh man okay they're cheap though like you know amazon i think they're four bucks or whatever yep. or seven bucks for three or something um and and it's just if you knock your camera around and take it out or a lot or whatever they'll knock off uh you know they'll come unscrewed this one so far very good uh been real happy with it and that wood fill is really sharp it's uh it gives a different feel it's and it, it's uh you know not only is it cool looking but it it just makes this camera that much more oh yeah different you know and it really is different so and you get a lot of looks uh, i was in vegas this past weekend and just getting people looking because i think they're i think it's a film camera i'm almost certain they're thinking that and they're going then they look again they go that's a film is that i said nope nope you know and you start to you know give up the conversation on it um because there were some film cameras actually out there i saw some <laughs> people talking so so that's one and it, and of course it comes in a nice little box too so oh nice wood and that yeah these, these these guys do it right they uh they've got some sharp straps and the whole thing let's see the second one and i won't spend a lot of time on it. i'll try to talk as close as i can to the uh, microphone here but it's a it's a new tripod and let's see if i can it's hard to get a tripod in these kind of frames <laughs> yeah but uh anyways this tripod is a carbon fiber tripod and it's if you're very familiar with the, and I think a lot of us are that shoot with the me photo and the day trip, is it the day trip? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's the day trip one. Is that the one you have too, Jay? Or, it's either that or the road trip. I think it might road, be trip, road trip. Road trip. Yeah. I think it's the road. The road trip is the one that turns into the monopod. Yeah. This is, this is the same, same basic size. Um, big difference though is obviously carbon fiber makes it a half pound lighter. And, and it's funny what a half pound feels like. Yeah. It just feels so much lighter. Um, it's a little crazy, but it does a couple of things. And if you notice, I'll get real close here. There's no, no center bar. Yeah. Right now, and that's because it detaches. And then this is what I've been looking for on a, on a tripod. So now you can flip out and I'm, this is, I knew this was going to be weird to do on, on TV here, <laughs> but I can get it all the way down flat. As you can tell from this arm, you nice. get flat 
and then the head's still in there. And yep. I mean, for me, this is what I really wanted for a lot of very, very low, um, you know, live composite shots. Yep. Where I can really get the cars coming by or the buses and that that type of thing. So yeah, really. And then you know, then I could just throw it obviously back on and and stick it on. It's real real simple like that. And uh, the head, the head's a real nice uh, ball head. It's got uh, bubble levels on the. Let's see if I can show you on the front, on the side, and in the screw panel there. Nice. So you've got three bubble levels to look at. Besides, of course, your own camera. So yeah, it's a real sharp one. I saw it with uh, Alex. I was shooting with Alex McClure there in Phoenix, and uh, he has one. And I thought it was just a me photo. Yeah. So I realized, you know, exactly what he was shooting with. So and what does that one run? It's like three thirty. So it's expensive. It puts you back a bit. It's carbon but fiber. But at the same though. time, it's carbon fiber, and yeah. you're not going to find a lot of carbon fiber ones like that. Here's uh, another side benefit of carbon fiber that most people don't think about. Yep, cool. Uh, you got it. Oh, man. Because yeah. <laughs> I was in Connecticut with it. Yeah. Oh, big You're time. carrying a, an aluminum tripod, uh, and it's cold <laughs> out. Holy crap. It gets yep. cold, and it sucks, and it's not a fun thing. Carbon no. fiber, yeah, it doesn't do that. So No, in fact, I've got a shot tonight that I'm going to share using this the very first day I had it down in Detroit, it was fantastic because it was not cold. Yeah. It wasn't warm. I mean, it doesn't have built-in heaters, but... <laughs> but it doesn't get cold like metal. <laughs> cold. So um, not only will we put the link in there, because, you know, this is a funny thing. Like, it, you really can't find this tripod at Amazon. You can find the aluminum one they make, but not the carbon fiber. But uh, Alex McClure, the uh, trailblazer, of course, that works with us at, over at Olympus, he's got a code, and we'll have it in there. It's like AZPG or something for 10% off. So if anybody wants to look into it, check that out. And uh, my last one will go pretty quick here. Uh, Jim Nix, a photographer, uh, has uh, a mirrorless photographer uh, out of Austin, Texas, just uh, wrote a book. And if you're familiar with Chris Smith and the Out of Chicago Book, how he started like the 100 places I think to shoot in Chicago mm -hmm. well Jim Nix has put something together for Austin Texas and uh, he is the man when it comes to knowing where to go in Austin I'm going to tell you because I've been in communication with him for the last couple of years because I go there a lot and I'll say hey tell me this cool place tell me a new place well he's put it all into a book an ebook it's only eight bucks cool. um, fantastic uh, to check it out 130 plus pages you know and, and important things, you know, how do, how do you get into this area? Where do you go? How do you shoot the state capitol? State capitol in Austin is amazing, you know, yeah. old Texas. So, you know, I tell everybody, check that out. We're going to have Jim actually on the show soon um, so he can, you know, talk about the book as well. But uh, I think you might be interested in just one last thing about Austin. I don't know how many Austinites we have on here or people keeping it weird because that's Austin. <laughs> But uh, next week, I'll actually be out in Austin at the Drink and Click event for uh, Olympus. Uh, next Friday night, the 11th, uh, from 6 to 11. So Drink and Click, uh, run by what, Juan, Juan Gonzalez. Yep. Right. And uh, all over the country, these things are. And uh, we did one back in November at the summit. Mm -hmm. They're a blast. I mean, yeah. Olympus brings a ton of equipment. They've got models. They've got, you know, you can shoot. You don't have to drink. I don't think I had a drink. In fact, I don't even tell you. I know I didn't have a drink. <laughs> but, you know, you just hang with a bunch of photographers. And, you know, if you're in the Austin area, it's free. And I will guarantee you they're going to have some Pen Fs there. So uh, yeah. you might want to stop by and check it out or, or say hi and see what's going on. Because, uh, you know, the thing only goes to 11. So that gives us a few more hours to shoot after that, too. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, those are definitely true. fun events. Uh, Juan puts on a heck of a good time. So, and like, yeah, Olympus will be there with a with plenty of gear to hand around for people to check out. So, yeah, stop by and check it out if you can. But uh, yeah, that's that's my quick three things. I know we're what we're doing good. We can still share some pictures. Sure. Yeah, we're doing we're doing good. You want to go ahead and share? Sure. Um, right. Nothing major. It's all stuff that's. Uh, that's been seen probably if you're following my vlogs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. Uh, first up, I decided that it was time to get back into the macros again. It's been a while since I've done it. And it was actually like 50 degrees out when I was doing this. Uh, but it was mostly, I think I just did these just because I wanted to take people on 
like a little macro shooting on my vlog. So this is just something that was, it's just one of those things you see when you're out shooting. So this is with the uh, EM10 Mark II and the 60 millimeter macro. This is not a bracketed shot. This is just a single shot. And I don't remember what the, uh, the lens information is as far as aperture and ISO and all that, but just a straight out of the camera JPEG. It's weird. I'm finding myself doing that a little more often now. Uh, the JPEGs right out of the camera. Uh, so yeah, that's how much I trust the Olympus JPEGs. <laughs> I haven't been doing a lot of editing lately. And the same with this one too. I'm just kind of floored by the amount of detail that you get. And again, this is just a straight out of the camera JPEG. Although this was, if I'm not mistaken, using the pop art filter uh, in like that crazy macro mode, you know, that you can pull off with, with the 60 millimeter macro at the one to one ratio. Again, EM10 Mark II there. Just the weird little things you find when you're out walking around and you're looking really, really closely at things. This is a pin F shot. And this, if I am not mistaken, is color profile number one. Straight out of the camera, JPEG. I haven't touched a single raw file from that camera yet. So this was at that house that I stopped at on the side of the road on my drive home for today's vlog. It's this weird door at the back of this house that's just standing like the back part of the house is falling down the door said screw it i'm not falling down i'm staying I thought that was up. an outhouse <laughs> yeah it's just so weird like it's just the door that leads to nothing pretty much you know mm -hmm. and uh the last shot is just again you know one of the color profiles this is color profile two and i just love the feel of these like it's hard to explain but you just get this rich vibrant you know color from it that's yeah it's 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 one of those things you just you can't really put a, a name to it it just yeah, has a feel and now i kind of understand you know why people you know mm -hmm. chased after like you know fuji cameras because of you know their film emulation and now we're at right. the same situation here with the olympus cameras where they just have this certain something to them that you can't pull off i mean you could probably pull it off in post i'm sure you can but mm -hmm why screw around with it and post if you can do it right in the camera. Well, so. that's, that's what I've, I'll tell you what, when you talk about JPEGs, um, you know, cause I've shot the pen F probably 80% over the last four months has been my camera. Um, you know, I have a lot of it to do with that project I was on, but at the same time, I, I've just learned to come and say, you know what, these JPEGs are where it's at. I'm, I'm getting it. <laughs> yeah. Cause I can't do the Raj yet. I mean, we can, there's a couple of ways that I can do some stuff through on one, um, you know, and, and that, and uh, I'll tell you, in fact, I'm not sure which one I would have done like that. Um, but most of them I've shot, I've just said, you know what, these are so cool. I can't, <laughs> I don't want to post process anything. Right. So, so I, I agree. Let me see if I can, uh, I'll try to share some here. I will start. Um, all right, you see in the beach? No. Mm, no. There we go. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, this one's out. This is Key West a few weeks ago. Went out to Key West for a week. And um, gosh, you know, one of these things, the furthest part in America, like 90 miles from Cuba, we got one day that was like 72. All the other ones were in 50s. <laughs> Who knows why? But Whatever, you know, it, we, we caught the, the sun sets usually in Key West are amazing, but we caught the sun rises and we're, I actually was a lot more happier. And uh, in this photo, I just I just love this photo in the morning, free in the morning, you know, just uh, sun coming up. That's just a great reflection. This is actually with an EM1. This is not with the pen. So, so you know that. And then the rest here are all with the pen. Um, this is just uh, not last weekend, the weekend before, or a couple of days before, <clears throat> spending some time down in Detroit, Ambassador Bridge here, uh, Sunrise. This actually is a three, uh, three photo HDR where I went ahead and actually converted those raws from the pen actually in on one, made them into TIFFs and then combined them, you know, because we don't have the raw converter yet for Lightroom. But uh, this is, you know, morning sunrise coming up. We got all the ice flow here passing by. It's just a really cool, cool shot of the morning from this park. And uh, what's really neat is they're redoing all this park because it's pretty crappy. So that's going to be a new thing. Um, then we just walked around town, town for a little bit. And this is a really odd picture. And, and I didn't think about doing it until I got home in post. 
Um, it is shot in color profile two. And um, it was a reflection. This is a puddle. And, you know, and of course, when you see puddles, everything's upside down. And I said, you know what, I'm going to flip this thing upside right. And when I did, the effect of the cement that's in the puddle made it the sky look pretty cool. So I said, yeah, I'm just leaving it like this. <laughs> and uh, I got a lot of comments on it. You know, everybody thought it was, you know, some kind of, you know, uh, cross process I did or some kind of uh, extra layer I put in there. And that's just actually uh, the puddle on the ground turned upside down. So, uh, you know, when you're out there taking the puddles next time and everything's upside down, flip it around and see what it looks like. Uh, and that's uh, that's where I came up with that one. Uh, the the next two or this next one this is color profile uh, color profile three from the pen this is my absolute favorite color profile besides the one I guess I designed you know here and there but this one just just knocks me out I, I can't get enough of this color profile this is taken with the body cap fisheye uh, in Vegas we were in Vegas last weekend this is downtown Vegas the old Vegas and um, just the skies and the, the green and here you are with a $99 lens on that camera, you know, and um, just, you know, if it, everything's a little bit distorted. That's not the, the whole idea behind it is to just show, show the colors and that, that it brings out with the pen, uh, some amazing stuff. Then I flip it around to my ultimate favorite, and that is the color profile too. And it's like a Tri-X film. You know, I, I know they don't want to say a lot of stuff about the type of film, but I'm telling you, this is like <laughs> Kodak Tri-X. Whether you want to say it or not, we're on a video. You know, we're on video. Um, it looks very similar to something I would call a Tri-X maybe. Yep. But this is this is uh, down on the strip. This is the Prada store. I'm telling you, this out of the camera, I don't, I don't do anything. I mean, I just, just love the way <clears throat> put the heavier grain, this grain is... As you can tell, the grain here, this this grain is the grain added from the camera. It is not grain that just throws noise on pictures. This is actual grain. And you, I mean, if you look real close at 100%, you can see that same grain runs through everything, just like it were film. You know, but the shadows, you know, the way I was able to adjust the highlights in it, um, you know, then obviously get the architecture of these crazy buildings in the mall. So, so yeah, those, those were... Uh, we're just a few and i'm telling you uh it's it's is cool now why isn't the stopping here I, it says i'm screen sharing i know i am okay where i lost my little thing you know what i'll do i'll do this is go. it gone now yep. all right <laughs> it shut it down and it has no choice yeah so, it's uh is that it's just crazy that black and white one the color or the mono profile too i can't say enough about that it is you know and it's funny, you know, forever it was like process, process, process. Mm -hmm. That's for me anyways, you know, it was always, yeah. you know, put your touch on it, put your touch on it. But, man, I'll tell you what, I'm the more I shoot with, especially with this camera now, mm -hmm. uh, with these film profiles or color profiles and mono profiles, it's, man, just straight off the camera, I just post them online. I don't have any problem doing that. Right. You know, and it's yeah. funny, I used to have this, like, maybe internally a little bit, this little gripe about people that are always saying you know get it right in camera get it right in camera mm -hmm. my thought was well you just don't know how to post process that's your problem <laughs> <laughs> but now it's like you know what it's right in camera with this you know and the jpegs just knock yeah. it out of the park so i don't have any problem sharing a jpeg if i you know i shoot raw plus jpeg anyway so yeah so do I. And if, I, I've, if I've I've i need the leeway you got the raw if you don't mm -hmm. which most of the time with these profiles you don't it's just rock and roll right exactly exactly uh, there's also a case too with that uh, tripod I didn't oh, bring cool. it up, and it's got a nice thing for your roller bag that you can flip it in the top. So, does again, it if you're traveling? You're does it there. come with spikes for the feet or anything like that? It or comes with it? all kinds of stuff in here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, all on the side. It's all on the uh, yep. outside, so it's not on the inside. Yeah, you've got all kinds of extra stuff. Sweet. A uh, little bit more than a me photo that I've noticed. So, yeah, Sweet. check that out, and you know, I, I'm certain our next show we'll probably talk a little bit if. And in between it, maybe some vlogging about the yeah. shooting the pen offs on the weekend. <laughs> uh, I plan on doing that in Ann Arbor this Saturday. So. <laughs> yeah, even if it snows, it doesn't matter. It's going to be cool. Yeah, but, literally in Michigan. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's where we hit. Oh, you know what we should talk about real quick is the Philadelphia. Philly. Yes. Yes. We, we just uh, a couple more, a few more people signed up. 
a couple just the last two days. Uh, so we have like three or four spots left. I say three or four because one contacted me tonight and they could be signing up tonight. I'm waiting to find out. But I'm telling you, look, it's first off, it's, it's, cheap. it's a great time. It's inexpensive. You get, you get to, it's live vlogging without the video. <laughs> right. Um, you're hanging with us for two days. And I'll tell you the, the absolute best thing because of the trips I've been doing lately, I've been with my wife or, you know, and you're out with your family, you know, God bless her that she does give me a little bit of leeway, but you're always feeling bad that you got to make her stop or we got to go back. And, you know, I need 20 minutes to work this live composite up, you know, <laughs> and, you know, and she's thinking about, we should be doing this and this. And I, I totally agree. Um, you don't have to do that. There's no excuses with when we're together. It's uh, all photographers. You don't have to, you know, you want to stop, you stop. Yep. You know, we talk and uh, uh, you can disengage from your life and focus on photography. And I'm telling you, that alone is worth the price. Oh, yeah. Without a <laughs> doubt. There's nothing, nothing can beat that, you know, getting out and, and doing your craft with other people. Right. The same thing. Yeah. No pressure. And that in the city is just, you know, overflowing with, you know, uh, opportunities and we've got some great ones and actually got a couple more emailed to us. So who knows? Uh, and then there's some festival I just found out about that night in front of the prison in front of the East state yeah. penitentiary. And if we can hit this festival, it's some crazy festival they do once a year with pagans and I don't know. Yep. It'll, it'll be, wild. be cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. It'll be cool. So yeah, check it out. Uh, we'll put the link in there, but uh, only you know a few spots left. We'd love to have you because we are once it's full, it's full. We're not. We don't want to take any more than ten. No, I mean, definitely. I just have have the fun and and get too many is you know it's just too much to you know it's like herding cats. Uh, <laughs> you know it doesn't work well, but we'll have a blast with ten for sure. Yep. So, all right. I guess that about wraps it up. Yeah, I think we uh, I think we set our beast. <laughs> yeah. I think so. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks everybody for watching. Quite a few live viewers tonight. That's always cool. encouraging. So uh, just tune in to the next show two weeks from now. Who knows what it'll be about? Yeah. Hopefully, it won't be about me vlogging consistently. <laughs> <laughs> so until the next time, we'll see you guys later. Bye. All right. Take it easy. See you.